Sit down, look a little bit forlorn, touch your microphone. Bro, you don't even have a microphone. This is so cringe. <laughs> okay, futurism. Let's talk about it. Okay, so what is futurist cooking? All right, to give a quick rundown of things, futurist cooking was something coined by Marinetti in the 1900s as a way to revitalize eating as some sort of performance art or culture practice. He did so by including gastronomy, music, sense into the mix to create an absolute original or innovative practice. However, this came at a cost, the abolition of pasta. To Marinetti, Pasta was heavy, nationalistic, and patriotic. It also disrupted the equilibrium of the consumer since it was something that was swallowed, not masticated. So it wasn't ideal. However, though this movement wasn't some sort of long-term trending thing, we still see remnants of it in current cuisine. Might not be 100% Italian, but let's look into it. Today I bring to you Ita Messi. Okay, so the word Ita Messi is derived from the word Ita, which is short for Italian, and Messi, which means meal in Japanese. So this is a genre of Japanese Italian fusion dishes. But if you look at some of these recipes are on this recipe site, some of them are not exactly made with Italian ingredients. Like the first one, Kantan Kare Chao Han Tumi Ita Messi, which means simple curry fried rice taste Italian dish. And this one, Nihon no Ita Messi. Napolitan, which is a spaghetti dish that's based off of the Italian spaghetti with Napoli sauce. Looking at these recipes though, some of them are made with Japanese ingredients or ingredients that might not be seen on a traditional Italian dish, or at least for this one, would be tamanegi, which is uh, onion, or ketchup, which is ketchup, which I assume that is part of the tomato-based sauce that they're using. But they also do have Italian elements in the dish, like shiro wine, which is something that's used in the original Napoli sauce. So, does itameshi actually carry remnants of that futurist cooking culture that we're looking for? That was my task for today, and with a friend, we went on a quest to a Japanese-Italian restaurant in search of a new gastronomic experience. To be young and in love in New York City To not know who I am, but still know that I'm good long as you're here to be drunk and in love in New York City Night into morning coffee Burning through the hours talking I like me better when I'm with you I like me better when I'm with you it was really busy when we got there, so we had to wait 15 minutes before we could grab a table. We ended up looking at their menu, and there were a lot of Japanese-Italian pasta dishes, and some Japanese and Italian anti-pasto. Can I get a splitting pasta? Can I get a splitting pasta? And can we also share the... Uh, I can help in the span, Mr. Use, where the room can't get no... We lay, let the day just pass us by I might get to too much talking I might have to tell you something I like me better when I'm with you I like me better when I'm with you I knew from the first time I'd stay for a long time Cause I like me better when I like me better when I'm with you It's been a long day, for real Okay, so what do you think about the food today? Same question? I thought the food was really good because I really enjoy pasta I definitely think it's more Japanese style because compared to the other pastas I've had before, this one is a lot more sweeter. The moment we walk into the restaurant itself, they can tell by the mural. They can tell it's gonna be fusion, but like, but they did try to put like olive oil cans in that bar we sat in front of. Like it made it seem like it was more Italian than Asian, I guess. In that sense, the atmosphere itself was pretty loud. Yeah, it was definitely it definitely felt more welcoming to talk though, like just to enter and be able to chat with your friends. Yeah. Just because it was so loud. Not gonna lie, it's also kind of Asian the way that they put the appetizer and a pasta at the same time. Because usually 
with course meals, they usually put the appetizer in first. In front of you person, you kind of split it and eat it. But then this time, they just put the appetizer and the pasta. Yeah, the minute it's ready, it's just served to you. Yeah. I think mine, in general, I guess like, Squid Ink itself, it's already pretty Asian <laughs> to use that kind of style dish. And they use shirasu and shrimp in there, so that definitely gave it to an Asian style twist. Oh, they also have that poached egg on top too. Oh, really? Yeah, there's a poached egg in there. Actually, speaking of that b-roll, it was interesting how the fact that they gave us chopsticks instead of forks to use. Why do you think it's so popular? I know it's like definitely altered for an Asian palette. In general, it's probably catered towards and more globalized. But that appetizer though. <laughs> but that was actually very Italian though. It tasted, it felt really Italian too. Even in, um, when I visited Japan before, when I went to Italian restaurants in Japan, obviously like the staff are Japanese and like the restaurant and the whole culture is Japanese, but they wouldn't serve, they didn't serve that dish we had, prosciutto. Pretty much, that. I feel like out of the entire experience that we had, that in itself is already like pretty Italian. Or I would like not say pretty Italian, but their, their attempt at making everything Italian style. That's true. Especially with olives. Yeah. <laughs> you don't like olives? Yeah. So this experience, does it actually relate to futurist cooking? Well, if you search up the definition of futurist cooking in a dictionary, I don't expect you to find itamishi written in the definition. I mean, itamishi dishes are mostly pasta dishes, which is already a big no-no in futurist cooking. But I do think that it was a new gastronomic experience. Well, a key concept in futurist cooking is the concept of renewal. The futurists wanted to make Italy a light, modern country. So basically something that could compete on the global stage. I mean, Japanese-Italian relations aren't something new either. Like we see in Fantozzi where he takes the secretary out to dinner. In that one episode, it was filmed at a Japanese restaurant in a way that would have gotten a lot of backlash in the current time. That particular episode also showed a lot of adversity to foreign food like the raw fish causing indigestion, or the particular way the Japanese threatened Fantozzi and the secretary when they wanted to disobey the restaurant rules and leave. I also think that this is a concept that we should take into consideration when we talk about Itamessi. But rather than the clashing of civilizations that we see in Fantozzi, I would say that Italian food has morphed through movement, migration, the exchanging of ideas into this genre of Japanese-Italian dishes that we see nowadays. So that in itself had become a new gastronomical experience where surprise Japanese ingredients have altered the taste of Italian pasta dishes, giving it a new sensuous feel. Using chopsticks at the restaurant also allowed us to consume the food more slowly and savor it more. And this has also appealed to a globalized audience as well because the dishes aren't as heavy as they used to be. But in conclusion, itameshi isn't exactly futurist cooking, but it does contain elements that contribute towards the futurist agenda. And their new innovative pasta dishes also act as a foil to counteract the reasons why that the futurists dislike pasta. All right, so that's it for today. Don't forget to drop a like, comment, and subscribe. Just kidding, but I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Actually, not in that movie. She's done a short story or something.